10.30 because I live in the central time zone. Um, this session is about whole groups. Here we go. Okay, I am Diane Disbro. Um, I am the circulation coordinator at Scenic Regional Library in Missouri Evergreen. Um, my library consists of nine branches. We serve three counties in East Central um, Missouri. We're just outside of St. Louis to the east. There are two other members of Missouri Evergreen at the conference this week. They are, well, one is from Jefferson County, which is just south of St. Louis. And our consortium cataloger is also here. And we're very glad to be here back in person again. Uh, we have 90 staff members at Scenic. We have about 300,000 physical materials. And because we belong to the consortium of Missouri Evergreen with 60 libraries, we have access, our patrons have access to 4 million items. How can you say no <laughs> to joining a, uh, a consortium offering that many materials to your patrons? So I just want to give you an idea who we are when I talk about what we did with whole groups. This was a feature that was introduced in, I should know the answer to that, but I don't, uh, 3.7, 3.8, something like that. And this is what it does. How do you feel when you find out that one of your favorite authors released a new book months ago and you didn't know about it? Does anybody know who this is a picture of? Alexander McCall Smith. He's one of my favorites. And when I walk down the new bookshelf, or heaven forbid, the regular bookshelves, in the M's for McCall, because he goes by McCall Smith, and I see there's a book there I haven't read, I'm a very sad patron. And I know that there are other patrons like that too. <laughs> So what a hold, a hold group does is it creates a bucket of patrons that really love Alexander McCall Smith or um, Julia Quinn or somebody like that. And then when these people uh, have published a new book and a new book is added to your library's collection, all of a hold is placed for all those people in that bucket. They don't have to know that their favorite author just published something new. They don't have to call the library or look it up in the um, OPAC or the mobile app and place a hold. It's done for them already. And then when the book is um, available for them, it's, oh my gosh, look at this, a new book by my favorite author. And I didn't have to do anything. I, and it's here waiting for me. Who are your patrons' favorite? authors. No, you do not survey them when they walk in the building or leave a note in the bathroom saying, please let us know who your favorite author is. Something we know as library staff members is staff, I mean, uh, patrons do not read signs in the library. True? Yes, I see the heads nodding. Yes, the patrons do not read signs in the building. So this is how, what I did to find uh, pa our patrons' favorite authors. I ran this report, list of items based on number of circulations. This report shows the list of items in a specific shelving location, as well as their number of circulations. So I ran this report for the two pre previous years, and uh, there's a, a limiter in the report that you can choose um, circulated over 25 times, circulated over 50 times because you do not want to find everything that's circulated in the last two years. And uh, that's how I found um, the authors because of course this, the report will list um, each title by that author that's circulated in the last two years. So you have to do a little bit of whittling down, but I found the 25 authors 
that had circulated the most materials in the last two years. And here they are. There are no surprises on this list, are there? Uh, one thing that was something un somewhat unexpected was Julia Quinn. And what does she write? Bridgerton. <laughs> you, did, you didn't know Alexander McCall Smith, but you do know Julia Quinn. It's okay, I'm not taking names on who's attending this session. <clears throat> Oh, you just didn't know his picture, yes. You do know what he writes, though. You've shelved him, yes. <laughs> and, and the series that I like of his is the Isabel Dahlhousie books. It, it started off as, the, here, off on a tangent, um, though that series started off as the Sunday Philosophy Club. Maybe you've heard of that. And when we were in lockdown, I ordered used copies of all the books in that series, and read through them all again, their uh, comfort books. Anyway, so these are the 25 most popular living authors for my patrons for the previous two years. And I do have to say living authors because someone who's not alive anymore is not writing new books. <laughs> Yeah, how long has J.R.L. Tolkien been publishing books? Forever, forever. Um, I gave this pre presentation a few weeks ago at a Missouri Evergreen Users Conference, and it was the same day that we heard that Ann Perry had died. So we won't be adding an Ann Perry group, and if we had had one, we would have to get rid of it now. Formats, how crazy do you want to get? Um, we have 25 hold groups, all adult fiction, regular print. As soon as we rolled this out, we already had patrons asking, are you going to have James Patterson's nonfiction books? Are you going to have large print books? And when I first brought this up to my director, as an, uh, a great thing to offer to patrons, he said, why not start with 100? And I said, how about if we start with 25? Because especially the people in tech services are the ones who have to create an event. That's what it's called when a new uh, title is uh, added to the catalog. So tech services have to keep track of the 25 authors we have right now. So let's just chill and see how this works. So to figure out how to do this, I read the evergreen documentation that's available to all of us on the portal page. The instructions are, as I say here, excellent, because I am not a, an IT person by any stretch of the imagination, but I could figure out how to create the groups, how to add people to the groups, and how to create events when an item was added to the catalog by reading the Evergreen documentation. I did put the instructions in Diane Speak and um, give them to our staff, shared them with the Missouri Evergreen Consortium, and I have some printed on the front table up here. If anybody else likes pieces of paper to take home from the conference with it's already distilled, you don't have to read the documentation. Um, here's the front page of the documentation. The whole group's feature allows library staff to create lists of patrons that can then be used to place multiple title level holds on the same bibliographic record. Patrons can join as many groups as they want to. Fulfillment is randomized. So if I said, please add me to the list before Taryn did, it doesn't mean that I'm always gonna get the book before her. Um, staff can add and remove patrons to groups. Patrons can remove themselves from groups, but they can't add themselves. I've got slides here that go through every step of what you do in the ILS. I'm going to, uh, and you'll have access to the slides of course, but I'm going to go over here to the test server 
and actually show you because you'll go, oh yeah, who wants to read the text when you can see it being done? And when you see how easy this is, you will be flabbergasted. You can offer this service to your patrons at hardly any work for yourself. So here in the, in the circulation dropdown menu, there is whole groups option. There is a little bit of a bug. It won't show all the whole groups unless you put way, we have 25 whole groups, but um, yeah, you have to ask it to show a whole bunch more than 25 to get them all to show. Um, so here's the whole groups we have. The, here's their ID numbers. You can see it's my library, SRL, Scenic Regional Library, all of our groups that we have, including a test. So that's why there's 26. So I want to add a new, whole, I want to create a new whole group. New whole group button. Name my whole group. Um, let's make Long John Silver. You could put a description in here. So if you were a crazy kind of person that wanted to use a large group, a large print group, and a, you know, regular audio books, you could describe your whole group there. And here you're going to make it visible to patrons if you want them to be able to see what whole group they belong to in the OPAC. If you don't want it, if you want to keep them in the dark, want to have a little bit of um, April Fool's Day fun with them, don't click that box. So I'm going to create a new bucket for Long John Silver. I'm happy to say that they are in alphabetical order. Here he is, Long John Silver, right between John Sanford and Nicholas Sparks. So now I have a new option for my patrons to join a Long John Silver whole group. Now, this took a little bit of um, remembering. When you do a patron search, what do you do? You type in the, the patron's name, patron, Jane, Jane patron. Um, so from here, you usually click on the patron's uh, name in the, in the search results and then go do whatever it is you want to do. Leave her a note that her umbrella was left at the union branch, so please come pick it up, that kind of thing. When you add a person to a, to a hold group, you do it from here because that's where the button is that says add to bucket. So I created a new hold group. I've done a patron search. And then from here, you click on add to bucket and all my hold groups are here. Plus a few other buckets I created. So they're attached to my staff login. I want to add her to the Long John Silver whole group. And way down at the bottom, you can see successfully added one user to Long John Silver whole group. Patrons cannot add themselves, so you have to do that for them. And then in her um, account, you can see in the other menu, Old groups. She belongs to the Sandra Brown group, the Stephen King group, and the Long John Silver group. And when she calls you and said, man, that, lot, that last Sandra Brown book was a real stinker. I don't want to read anything by her ever again. I'd be happy to take care of that for you. In her account, you go to actions, remove hold groups. Are you sure? Yes, she was quite adamant.
So I can either put the barcodes in here or search for patrons, which we all tell the developers, thank you so, so, so much for adding this feature when we place holds. Because no matter how many times you say, I'm gonna ask for the patron's name first, and then I'll be in his account when I'm gonna place the hold, invariably somebody will call and say, do you have such and such? And staff will just look it up and they say, will you place a hold on it for me? And it used to be heavy sigh, but now we have this search button. So if you search for a patron, let's say another patron once said whose last name is Joe. I mean, his last name is patron. Here's Joe, Joey and Joey, June, Joey Jr. We can add this patron. Where'd he go? I must have done something wrong. Anyway, you can search for a patron and put their barcodes in here and then line up all the, oh, there he is, gosh. So here he is, Joey. We can add him to the whole group. You could look up a bunch of patrons and then add them all at once. So we add him to the whole group. Now we have current users, two. So this whole, if this is something else to, to uh, remember is you have to double click on the line to bring up the uh, future actions. So double click on CJ Box to get the CJ Box group. Shows you all the patrons that are currently members. You can add users. And you can create an event. I don't want to create an event for this one. Come on. There we go. I want to create an event for long silver silver. So Long Silver, Mr. Silver, or Long if you're his best friend, um, has, has uh, published a new book. So we will create a whole event. New hold group event. And what you put in here is a target record, which is the TCN number, the title control number. So I'm going to put the TCN number in for his new book. And this, this um, override all hold blocking conditions possible is, uh, is checked by default. And of course we want to override all hold conditions possible, hold blocking conditions possible. And create an event, it's thinking, it's thinking. And then down here it says new event is created. So his new book has now been put on hold for Jane and Joey. Here's Jane again, her holds, here it is. Treasure Island, she now has a hold on Treasure Island. The new book by Long John Silver. I didn't even break a sweat standing up here and doing this. It is one of the simplest things that you can think of to do in Evergreen. So here's step one, create the group using the drop down menu here in the so the circulation drop-down menu. Click on create a new hold group, name your group, add a description. Oh, choose an owning library. I didn't describe that. Um, and I probably did not uh, make this the owning library all of scenic regional library because it probably defaulted to head headquarters, whatever. You want to choose your, who, who owns this group then? So it would be your org unit. Choose if you want it to be visible to patrons and click create button. You're done. Step two, you can add single patrons by performing a patron search and then add them to a bucket from that search page. 
or you can go to the whole group's buckets themselves and add more patrons at a time than just one. And you create an event. When the new title is added, you go back to that whole group groups page in the circulation drop down menu, double click on the pertinent whole group, click whole group events, hold events, um, new whole group event, enter the TCN, click create event. And you're done. You've just placed a hold for multiple patrons all at once. Our collections development librarian was very excited about this because he's the one that all the um, request an, uh, request an item link on our website go, goes to him. And now all these people already know that I don't have to request the latest book by so-and-so because I'm already on the whole group. Then you need to publicize it because your patrons will have to find out about it. We put it in our um, monthly newsletter that goes out in our emails, blasts. Um, we have digital signs in all of our branches. So there's a, a, uh, a slide that explains about whole groups. And the staff, if you see someone checking out a David Baldacci book, say, would you like to join our David Baldacci whole group? We launched this back in October. Why does that seem like so long ago? Um, so October, we launched it October 1st. So we talked about it in our October newsletter. Um, by October 14th, we had 54 members in the whole groups, in our 25 whole groups. And a week later, there were 76. A week after that, there were 96. And when I looked at the numbers in March, there were 382 patrons in our 25 whole groups. Um, the group with the most members, I should have made you guess before I went to this slide. What would you have guessed? James, James Patterson, David Baldacci, somebody would have guessed David Baldacci, has 37 and poor Tracy Peterson only has one follower. Um, we'll be evaluating this and I've already had staff have told me that some patrons have asked for other authors to be added. And I got to tell you, some of those people I'd never heard of. So I don't think we're probably going to be adding a whole group for patrons. I mean, for authors that even I have never heard of, but that's always an option. You can add more, create more whole groups get rid of whole groups that nobody's using. Like this little lady, we probably should just say, okay, we'll just remember to put a hold on it for you. Um, I asked on the um, Evergreen listserv for comments from other libraries that are already using whole groups. And is Misty here from Clinton, Indiana? She said that they have 24 author hold groups. Everybody's happy. Uh, about them being created and that they're being filled randomly. This helps the workflow and improves the quality of customer service. And Chauncey from Sunbury, Ohio. Is that you? Yeah. Is it you really? <laughs> well, thank you for answering my email and sending me such a complete uh, evaluation. <laughs> they have 54 whole groups. They're mostly author groups, but they have a few genre groups. It's a huge improvement to the ILS. It makes hold placement more efficient. It also helps them estimate how many co to uh, copies of a title to buy. And I thought that was a, an interesting insight. If your collections development person knows that you have 150 people in a particular whole group, he'll think he needs, if he's, they're trying to order enough to, to um, fill the holds anyway, and they already have an insight how many holds are going to be placed on this. Uh, patrons would like for us to expand our offerings to include other formats like large print and audio books and nonfiction James Patterson. 
but it becomes tougher to manage with the more groups that you have. We look forward to development that will allow patrons to add themselves to groups and make recommendations for new groups. So this is my contact information. Um, my address, I didn't put my phone number on there. I guess I didn't want you to call me. And my email address, uh, since we have Chauncey who has more experience than I do here and me, what kind of questions do you have about whole groups? Yes, ma'am. So the question is, how does tech service keep track of these authors and hold groups so that a, a new book doesn't slip by them without them creating a hold event? I know that the tech services at my library, um, the manager has a list on her wall, but you have to know to, to look at the list in the first place. Do you have any insights in that? Okay, staff at the a library in Ohio that has been doing um, whole groups for a while say that since they are popular authors, the staff recognize that these ones probably have whole groups with them. Um, so it's not gonna be something obscure like the person that wants this whole group for someone I'd never heard of before. And then ask a question too about um, Oh yes, when when is the hold a place when it's on order or when the, the items are actually available? Because we do use on order records. I'm sure that she is she's placing those holds when it's an on order record because that's what we would do for our normal patrons. So we've been taught, we've been talking about um, when to create the hold event, when the record is on order, which is when I probably most of us are placing holds that have been, you know, patrons have requested it. That's when we're placing the holds or when the record actually goes active because this is uh, not retroactive now. 
if you join the whole group today, something that would be a record for an item that just became active last week is not going to be on hold for you because it's not retroactive. So if you place, if you create the event when you place the order, then anybody who joins the whole group after you've placed the order is going to have to have an individual hold placed for them. So have you ever done it the other way and created the hold event when the record went active? Yes, they lose their place in the in the queue, don't they? But people who have placed an individual hold will be at the top of the list ahead of the group. Oh my. Yes. So in other words, we're discussing something that is kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you if you place the, if you create the event when you place the order, then the people in your whole group who know they're in your whole group and are watching their accounts online will see that okay, it's I can see it shows on order. I can see it's been placed on hold for me. I'm gonna get all hyped up about this book that won't be published for six months. And then you have to individually add the the people who join the whole group after that event is created. Yes, and if you wait till later to, to create the event when it's actually available, then those people who are watching their accounts online see that their name's not there and they can see that the item's on order, but they don't have a hold for it. I'm repeating all this stuff for the sake of the <laughs> recording. Yes, ma'am. I tell you what, and if I didn't have to stand next to this microphone so everybody could hear me, I would be over there jumping up and down saying with great emphasis, remove Q order from everything you publish to your patrons. And then you'd... Yes. It, well, and I belong in a consortium that actually shares resources, and I not, no, not everybody's res, um, consortium does that. And some of our libraries have age protection of three months, and some have six months, some have no age protection. Um, your hold, the hold position means nothing. So we took it off the OPAC. It's still on our mobile app because some libraries in our consortium still want to see that. I don't know why. And then this is what I this is what I always suggest is that when someone's standing in front of you and asking where I'm where am I in the queue, let me explain to you how queue order works, and then you will absolutely kill them, and they will walk out the door before they listen to the whole explanation because and maybe they will then understand that it is a very meaningless number, but the staff can't. That's, I guess the staff could see it. But uh, we don't teach the staff, our staff, to look at queue position. It's not saved in the columns on any of our workstations. You just have to educate your, your um, patrons that it means nothing. It's a meaningless number.
Another question? So the question was, what about creating a hold event when you place an order on the item and create another hold event when it becomes active? Currently, that would cause a duplicate holds for the people who had the hold created when the um, on the on order record. Um, We have in the room with us today the developer of Hold Groups. <laughs> He is a, our current hero because this is a great feature. And he says that, yes, it would be possible to uh, develop. It would be a, a, not a huge project to develop um, a feature that would check to see if a hold had already been placed for a patron. So we could do two, create two hold events and not create duplicate holds for patrons. And it would be a larger project to be able to create hold groups for meta record holds. It's uh, 
with the dragon, it would become the mold for the next customer, and that led to mold with the bad bad. You know, like filled with bad bad. Yes. The question is, is it possible then to add a feature where patrons could add themselves to hold groups? And the answer is exactly what I was thinking. You open that door to patrons and they will say, yeah, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And they don't really want that. And then the book comes in from the, for them, for me in Missouri, all the way across the state. So it spends two weeks in transit when somebody else could have been reading it. And it comes in the patron says, I don't want this. Oh, well, you're in the, the whole group for that patron, for that author. Oh, I didn't mean to. If you allow patrons to get their fingers in the pie too much, you know, like they don't read the signs that say self check machine, you know, um, you could be asking for trouble. So that's maybe part for a, lot, a larger conversation. Looks like we have three minutes. Any other questions? <laughs> 